Hi, my name is Victor Bart. Welcome to Retro Machines. In the last video, we talked about the 440BX motherboard and the HP video card recommendations. But this video will be also about video cards, but about our beloved brand 3DFX. We're gonna discuss the 3DFX cards and for what kind of system you can use them. We're gonna talk about the Fudu 1, Fudu 2, Fudu 2 SLI, Fudu 3, Fudu 5, and yes, also the Fudu 4. But my Fudu 4 is in the storage in a build, so I can't show them. But if I do this, it's like the Fudu <laughs> 4, the Banshee, and the Fudu Rush. And the video sponsor of this video is, of course, PCBWay. And they are a long time sponsor now and they send me Christmas present. PCBWay is a company where you can uh, send in your designs for a PCB. They can print it for you as a prototype or a small production run or a hobby project. And if you want they can even make a PCB for a Fudu One. So if you have the design you send it to them, they print it for you and they can do I think up to 14 or 16 layers. So something very advanced can also be made. And right now they have a big sale going on. The 2022 PCB Christmas Big Sale. Some of the deals that are going on right now is free Christmas coupons, free prototype for Christmas theme design, Christmas sales, call for Christmas projects. If you want to know more about PCB Way, check the link in the description. Let's first talk about the Fudu One. And the Fudu 1 is a 3D only card, it's an add-on card and that was kind of cool because a lot of computers had a 2D card without any 3D support and then this card came on the market and you could add it to your computer even if you had like a compact with onboard graphics and a PCI slot you could add 3D support in it. So that was a really cool way to start with 3D support and play Quake 1 with 3D and it was amazing. And the way how you connect it is you had to pass through cable from your VGA card to here and then your monitor goes on here and if you go in 3D modus then this card switches on and takes over the Fudu 1 has 4 megabytes of memory and the main resolution and the highest resolution of this card is 640 by 480 because it's limited by the amount of memory but if you put this in like a Pentium 160 megahertz up to a Pentium 2, 233, 266 it's really a nice add-on card and you can really play the early 3D games for 486 with PCI I wouldn't recommend this because the 486 CPU is a little bit on the weaker side to power this card. But it is possible that kind of systems is a little bit different kind of era for gaming. So from the first Pentium up to the Pentium 2's this is a really good card. But even if you build like a way faster machine and you put this in it still will work and let's open it with a Fudu 2 as a knife because why not I have so much Fudu 2's that I can just use one as a knife PCB way happy new year 2023 Merry Christmas PCB prototype the easy way so we have here a pillow Merry Christmas ah and the other way is for the rest of the year after the Fudu 1 they came out with the Fudu 2 so this is still the add-on card type, but this one has now 12 megabytes of memory. And you have also some version of 8 megabytes, but I don't have them in my collection and i never seen them myself. They exist, but I only have like the 12 megabyte versions. And the nice thing about this card, and this is like my favorite 3DFX card, because if you add a second one, you can put a cable in between and run them in SLI. And the way this SLI works is the first card draws the first line of 3D, the second card the second line and the, then the third and the fourth. So that they switch the lines per card. And with one card with 12 megabytes you can run 
800 by 600 resolution but with two cards you can go to 1024 by 768 so that is a really nice resolution and then the game looks way better than the 640 by 480 of the Fulu One but you need a little bit more powerful system to uh, get the most out of it and back in the days I had a Pentium 100 overclocked to 120 and I wanted to have 3D card and back then the Fudu 1 was already out for a while and the Fudu 2 was on the market and I worked by a computer company and everyone said get the Fudu 1 for your Pentium 100 because it can't drive the Fudu 2 so of course what I bought was the Fudu 2, the Helios version, just like this one. And I had like a single Fudu 2 in that system. Amazing when the, f the first time when I saw Quake 2 on it. Because I was playing it in software modus and then in 3D modus. And it was so smooth, so cool. <laughs> yeah, that was... Yeah, I think everyone still knows the first time they saw 3D. So let me know in the comments which game and 3D card was your first experience with the magical thing of hardware 3D rendering. If you use uh, the two Fudu 2's you only have one pass through cable. The rest is done by the SLE cable and yeah the Fudu 2 is I think it's yeah my favorite Fudu uh, solution because if you use this you have still a lot of choices in 2D cards. If you go to the HCP card all the 2D cards also support 3D. So you have like an HCP card that's fast with good 3D support and good 2D quality. And then you add the Fudus to next to it. So you have a lot of options in terms of 3D and a normal uh, non 3 dfx card has Direct 3D and OpenGL and this adds the Clyde support for the games that support Clyde the proprietary 3D uh, rendering solution of 3DFX I think that is that makes it amazing it's the best of both worlds and the performance of two Fudu 2's is really good when you use a single Fudu uh, 2 I would recommend yeah from the Pentium 100 by my own experience probably a little bit higher like once from yeah let's say from 166 then the sweet spot starts up to yeah Pentium 3000 I think this card is so versatile that it works for the whole generation of Pentium 1, Pentium 2, Pentium 3 chips. And if you go with the SLI setup with the two cards, I would recommend skip the Pentium 1s and start with a Pentium 2 300 up to Pentium 3000. That works really fine, even if you have enough PCI slots and want to have like an, an Pentium 4 uh, <coughs> I still don't like Pentium 4's so bad recommend if you go for an Athlon XP or something you can still use a Fudu 2 setup to get the Clyde support a nice sturdy telephone holder which is adjustable all metal uh, you can even tighten up the screw scan if it gets loose so thanks so let's see what the next present is. Okay, this is really cool. They are printed PCBs. One is SMT footprint a reference guide and the other one is the schematic symbols reference guide. Let's now talk about the Fudu 3. Because the Fudu 3 went a different route than the Fudu 2. It wasn't an add-on card anymore but a standalone card. This one is HP, most are HP and some are even PCI and my f good friend Ross sent it to me but this card doesn't really work so I probably need to fix it one day but it's a really awesome card with this style of passive cooling both are Fudu 3 3000s 
but you have also the Furu 3 2000 and this one is in a box complete I found it super cheap on a flea market but this is a little bit different style of a card with the drive CD and the original uh, inlay so this is the Furu 3 2000 but you have also a Furu 3 2000 in this style PCB with a smaller cooler so you have some different versions and most of the Fudu 3's has 16 megabytes of memory some onboard Fudu 3's of MSI motherboards have the Fudu 3000 like a lower clock version uh, with 8 megabytes of memory so yeah this is much better so my recommendation is if you can find it get the Fudu 3 3000 that is like a really good card there's also a Fudu 3 3500 and the original version that came in the original boxes had like an extra box with TV in and out and video capturing but it's uh, with a really annoying box and a really long cable but there's also a compact Fudu 3 3500 version with a normal VDA it's a little bit higher PCB it's higher clocked than the 3000 without the extra box so if you can find that that is also a really cool card but they are a little bit um, more difficult to find I think the Fudu 3 3000 is the easiest to find and of course the 2000 but get the 3000 if you can so for the Fudu 3 uh, 2000 I would recommend any Pentium 2's for, so from 233 uh, up to Pentium 3 600 that would be a nice sweet spot and for the Fudu 3 3000 I would recommend like a Pentium 2 300 up to the Pentium 3 700 that would be a nice sweet spot if you want to see more about this Fudu 3 2000 PCI I made a few years back an unboxing video so I will link it in the end of this video and in the description so please check it out because I think it's amazing to un unbox an old product like this and I also have the Fudu 5 in box this is only the box And this box is with a Fudu 5 inside, but it's not as complete as the Fudu 3, but still with the plastic inlay. But this box is a little bit damaged. But the box designs of the Fudu cards look just amazing. They sent me a nice set of uh, tools, some rulers and some things to measure holes and to see BGA 20 by 20 crits. So this is perfect if you design PCBs to have a, something um, a reference guide to see what you need to uh, build let's now talk about the Fudu 5 5500 and about the Fudu 4 4500 which is not here <laughs> in my studio right now so I will put an image on screen so you can see the difference in the designs and you have a PCI version and an HP version and both are with just VGA you have also a Mac version with a digital output but I don't have it so let's just talk about these two cards and why it's so cool because this is like the highest performing 3DFX card that actually came on the market you have also the Fudu 5 6000 with instead of two video chips four video chips there are prototypes a lot of prototypes are also running prototypes they are remakes of that card uh, which PCB can print uh, if you have the PCB design but for me the 6000 is less interesting to have in my collection because I already enjoy the 5500 a lot and I don't need four of these chips because I already have a video card with eight of these chips so yeah the 6000 is for yeah for noobs yes 
you need eight chips to be cool. Let's talk about the 5500 before I lose my biggest subscriber Ross that actually has a running 6000. The cool thing about the 5500 is that it has two video chips on board and 64 megabytes of memory. And there are already modded versions with more memory and I don't go in that rabbit hole in this video because yeah, uh, there are a lot of modders that do crazy things with 3DFX cards. I think this was one of the first video cards that needed extra power. So here you have a Molex for extra power to this card. If you run games like Unreal Tournament or Quake 3 this card will fly. And because of the 64 megabyte of memory you can also use the higher resolutions. I think up to 1600 by 1200 you can really go uh, with big CRTs and get some really amazing graphics. It's a really good performing card. If you can find one get a 5500 but any of the 3 graphics cards are amazing to own. And there's also a very unique version of this card and that's the Voodoo 5 9000. And instead of two video chips it has 32 video chips. And it's amazing to see how it scales from 2 to 4 to 32 chips. The card is way bigger so it's a bit more difficult to fit in a case. But if you find a case where it fits and you find a power supply that can actually power it. Get the Fudu 5 9000 because the performance goes to the roof. So you also need a new roof on your home after playing games. Let's talk about the difference bec between the Fudu 5 and the Fudu 4. It's basically the card in half. So the Fudu 4 4500 has only one video chip. It's still the same chip as the Fudu 5. And it has only 32 megabytes of memory. So it has a little bit less performance. But the Fudu uh, 5 and the Fudu 4 both uh, support 32 bit colors. And the Fudu 3 only supports 16 bit color. So that's a big upgrade to the Fudu 5 and Fudu 4. And the Fudu 4 doesn't have external power. So if you uh, have a small power supply. And Fudu 4 is a better choice. But I think it's getting really really hard to get a Fudu 4 4500. Because they are rarer than a uh, Fudu 5 5500. And probably more expensive. The Fudu 4 doesn't perform that much better over the Fudu 3 3000. It's getting really expensive and hard to find these uh, cards. So I hope you get lucky and find something local for a normal price because the eBay prices are completely insane and not fun anymore. For a Fudu 5 5500 I would recommend like a Pentium 3 700 to Pentium 3 1000 megahertz. That works really well like in the ultimate year 2000 build. It's combined with a Pentium 3 1000 megahertz. It really flies in the older games. And some people use this in way f newer system like the Athlon XP's, the Pentium 4's and there are a lot of uh, motherboard compatibility lists and stuff like that. But I don't really care about using a Fudu 5 in a system higher than Pentium 3. Because if you have a CPU like that you come into an other era of gaming where you need a better video card in terms of uh, DirectX support and stuff like this. This is limited in the DirectX support. I think it's only up to DirectX 6 or something and for the Pentium 4 generation you want DirectX like 8 point something. So you can better build in a Pentium 4 uh, with a GeForce 3 or 4 or, or a similar AT card. That works way better than trying to get stuff running on this one. This is just for older games and older CPUs in my opinion. There are a lot of people that think different about it but 
that's their right. My opinion is go for Pentium 3 era systems with this card. And for the Fudu 4 4500, I would recommend yeah, go for a Pentium 3 500 up to Pentium 3 also one key card. I combined mine in a similar system to the Ultimate Year 2000 system also with the Pentium 3 one key cards and it performs well just a little bit lower resolution and you have the same frame rates as this on the higher resolutions Pentium 3 systems are really good for the higher end uh, 3DFX cards okay this is cool they sent me a real PCB where you can put in a battery and hang in your Christmas tree only I don't have a Christmas tree. Okay, I found an old 2032 battery from the Xserve. So let's see if it works if I put it in. An RGB Christmas light. I will hang it somewhere, not in a Christmas tree, but... <laughs> this is just amazing. And I like that you can switch out the battery really easy. And it's designed by Akiri-san. Thanks Akiri-san. This is an amazing design. And now a card where I don't know much about. The Fudu Benshi. It was a lower budget card with 2D and 3D in one. Standalone card. I think it had 16 megabytes of memory. And I think it came on the market before the Fudu 3. As a standalone solution. I would recommend this more for a, like a lower end build like an Celeron or an AMD uh, K6 or something like that you still have the Fudu, uh, the Clyde support and 3D, uh, Direct 3D OpenGLs stuff like that but not the highest performance but if you can find it it is cool to have in the collection but personally I never used it and has active cooling and this fan needs to have some maintenance because it's <laughs> not turning that great normal VDA output basic cards and here here it says 1998 now the Fudu Rush and this was the first 3D FX card with 2D and 3D combined but not like as the Banshee where it was in one chip but this is like a combination card so here you have an Alliance semiconductor promotion chip that's for the 2d part and for the 3d part they slapped on here like I think it's around the Fudu 1 in terms of chips and memory not sure if it's higher clocked or lower clocked or similar clocked you can look that up on Wikipedia but I think it's a really cool style of a card with a daughter board with the 3D FX chipset. And I think other brands had it in one PCB. And this is with only PCI. And this card I would say go for any Pentium 1. I think that works uh, really well. What I found out when I tried this in a uh, Pentium Pro build with Windows NT that I couldn't find good working NT drivers. So this is more a card for Windows 95 and 98. So if you can find it, get one, play with it, but don't expect the highest performance out of this card. It's not made for it. But it's really cool that it is combination of 2D chip and 3D chips. Okay, this is amazing. A super big mouse pad. I really love big mouse pads because then you can just go crazy with your mouse all over the place. Or maybe this is the mouse pad and this is just a desk pad. But this also works as a mouse pad. So we have two mouse desk pads. Nice coffee mug with nice uh, uh, golden uh, uh, line here and nice logo on top of it. So yeah, awesome, thanks. But I think it's not Unimog proof, so I probably won't bring it with my Unimog and co offroading PCB Way team, thank you for the nice Christmas presents and the blessings and the support for, on my channel. I really like uh, PCB Way as a sponsor because uh, they make a really actual product 
that uh, can help you uh, make things instead of some sketchy sponsor. This is a real sponsor. So that is really important. And also big thanks to my uh, Patreon supporters and my subscribers because because of you I can uh, do this and make videos about old shit like this computer stuff. So if you want to support me and become a Patreon and get access to my Discord server you can check the link down in the description and thanks for watching. Okay they didn't send me a phone holder but a PCB holder for Voodoo 5s.